Hey everyone, welcome back to Signal Processing with Paul. And what I wanna do in this video is talk about why derivatives are easy in Fourier land. Now, this is going to be the case for the Fourier transform or the Fourier series, depending on whether or not you have a periodic signal or not. So since we've introduced both, we can of course talk about them. So let's go ahead and create a table that talks about the Fourier series and the Fourier transform. So this is going to be the Fourier series and this is going to be the Fourier transform. And we're gonna have our forward Fourier series. So C sub K equals one over T, the integral from minus infinity to infinity of once again, S of T E to the minus J two pi K T over T. And my Fourier transform S of F equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity of S of T e to the minus j two pi f t dt. And likewise, going backwards, what you have is s of t equals the sum from k equals minus infinity to infinity of c sub k e to the j two pi k t over t. And likewise, s of t in the Fourier transform case is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of s of f e to the positive j two pi f t. Now this is going to be df. So when I have a case where I have a function s of t and I want to take the derivative of it, I want to know what d dt of s of t is. Now I could do it but there's another way I could do this too using the Fourier series and the Fourier transform. If it's difficult for me to take this integral, or sorry, take this derivative. If it's difficult for me to take the derivative, one of the things I can do is transform it into the Fourier series representation. And if this is a periodic signal, what we can say is S of T equals the sum from K equals minus infinity to infinity of C sub K e to the J two pi K T over T. So likewise, d dt of s of t is just simply equal to the sum from k equals minus infinity to infinity. Now c sub k doesn't depend on t. It's actually just a constant. It's just a coefficient, so it doesn't matter. c sub k comes out here, and then we just take the derivative of this with respect to t, which equals e to the j two pi k t over big T times it's an exponential and then here is where the chain rule comes in the derivative of the inside of the exponential which is just going to be j 2 pi k over t that's what hat comes out and what this really is equal to is this is just equal to derivative with respect to time this is equal to basically the inverse Fourier transform of j 2 pi k over t times c sub k. So you just take your Fourier coefficients and you multiply them by j two pi k over t and then you do it this way. And likewise, if we look at our Fourier transform, d dt of s of t, just looking at this expression, what do we get? Well, this is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity. s of f, it just depends on f, doesn't depend on t, so that doesn't matter. And we have d dt of this exponential here. This is going to be e to the j two pi f t times the derivative of the inside, which is going to be j two pi f using the chain rule. And this is of course df. So what is this? This is basically equal to, well, this is basically the inverse Fourier transform or yeah, I could do it that way. The other way we could of course do it is just say f inverse of j two pi f times s of f. So what I've done is just multiplied the spectra by j two pi f. So rather than having to take the derivative, what I can do is go from here and go into the frequency domain. So we have some function, um, I'm gonna just call this capital S of f slash k, which could be c sub k, c sub f. Then what I do is I multiply it by this value, j2 pi k over big T, or just j2 pi f, which f is of course defined as k over t as we did before. So this is going to be j2 pi f times s of f. And then now I can 
do the inverse Fourier transform, transform back, and I've done my derivative. So this is why derivatives are so easy to take when we're looking at the Fourier transform, because all we have to do is just multiply by some factor at each frequency, pretty simple and straightforward, no needing to do the chain rule, no needing to do anything else. We've once again represented our signal in a way as a sum or integral of complex exponentials where these individual frequencies are orthogonal and now it's really easy for us to do all sorts of derivatives and integrals. So in the next video I'll talk about how this works in the case of integrals. See you then.